What the fans want to see. With a triumphant gesture, the captain of the winning team holds the trophy over his head. A wild shout rises up from the stadium, or in this case, the church. <laughs> the trophy is the visible sign of victory. We just had state basketball tournaments where a few teams were able to to do this. We start March Madness pretty quick here, and at the very end of that, we'll have one team that will be hoisting it up. And all those that were their fans, all those that were on their side, will be able to chant, we're number one. We're number one. And then, after that all dies down, then the trophy will take its place in a musty old cabinet somewhere, maybe next to several other old trophies. It won't have much meaning except for those who were directly involved with it this time. Or in our case, when we're done with it here, it will go back to the office of our business manager so that she can then find a place to try and hide it and be embarrassed. Sign of victory. Yahoo. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Here's our trophy. <laughs> Be careful, fans. Be sure to want to applaud this. Because we hoist this up, and it's not so that we can say we're number one. And then we can take and just put this aside somewhere, or hang it in a church, or string it around our neck, and say, that's fine, that's good enough. It's not what this trophy is about. Isn't the cross also a sign of victory? Only we don't have ourselves to thank for it, but rather the suffering and the death of Christ. And we don't raise up this sign of victory so that we can wave it triumphantly over our heads. We raise it up when in our inmost being we are ready to take last place just as Christ did. From the cross from letting go of self, from living for others, the world will be made well. From the cross, the victory of Christ is spread. But we just can't be fans. We're called to be disciples. Not just so that we can share in the victory, but so that we can help others to know that they too are redeemed by the love of God that has shown itself 
in Jesus' suffering and death and God raising him to the fullness of life. We can't just look at this trophy and say, yeah, I agree with that. We can't have the trophy and say, well, okay, I'll line up behind it. We have to see in this trophy ourselves. And we have to see everyone who is in need of the message of God's kingdom. The message of hope. There's a prayer somewhere. It's one of the mass prayers, and I came across it the other day, and then I didn't write down remembering where it was. And of course, I went back to find it this afternoon and couldn't remember where it came from. But it's one of the, the prayers, one of the feasts of like the triumph of the cross or Good Friday or something like that. But there's a passage in there that says the cross shows God's judgment on the world and the power of Christ crucified. God's judgment on the world. God's judgment is not what we might think. It's not, okay, prove yourselves. It's, let me show you the power of my love for you. This life, all that it entails, especially the suffering, the disappointments, the frustrations, the betrayals, the physical agonies. God says to us, my judgment is that all of those I will use to bring you to new life, the fullness of life. God's judgment on the world, God's judgment on us is victory. We win! But in order for us to know that victory... We have to carry our cross. And in those times when it doesn't feel like a trophy, but a burden, then we're getting it. From the cross, from letting go of self, from living for others, the world will be made well. That's our hope. That's our challenge. So yeah. It's good that we have a trophy the victory is assured. But folks, in God's name, we still have a lot of work to do.